So you can see here in this comparison between Maya and Unreal how because I've brought in the cars from the Unreal scene as well as the sun from the Unreal scene that I've got and the buildings from the Unreal scene, I'm getting the exact match with the shadows from the sunlight here. And Just scooch this over, get a little more room. I also have the panoramic HDR in the scene. And so I can set this here. This is a stand-in that I've made for the cars. And I can just turn that to uh, primary visibility off so that they'll cast shadows like we were seeing but you won't see them in the shot and this here this is a ground plane that I can apply a shadow caster to to catch the shadows of the car on the street so the car is then lit by this sunlight imported from Unreal as well as from this dome skylight imported from Unreal and then I have over here, let me make these a little prettier. I have as well in here the skyscrapers to cast the shadows. And then finally, I have the camera from Unreal. So here's my camera animation. And I then render that out with all of the standard AOVs and cryptomats, and then come into Nuke. So as I was showing before, I have the read nodes for all the various things, the read node for my CG from Maya, which has uh, reflections on the ground as well as shadows on the alpha and occlusion. And I've got then these various passes that I can mix and combine together. And then I can take the ambient occlusion and multiply that together with the skylight because ambient occlusion means occluding the ambient light, which is the indirect skylight, is the same thing as ambient light. And then I put that into the shadow that I'm casting, and then I put that whole thing over this in the alpha and then I get this nice uh, contact shadows from the occlusion as well as integrating the uh, skylight into the occlusion to, into the shadows to get uh, proper lit shadows and here I'm doing a little bit of uh, tweaks on the camper just a, just a little tick and and then if we come into here, into the reflections, I have here a cryptomat where I isolate out the car and then I do an out. So I isolate out just the reflections part. And then I take here this uh, roughness map and I invert it and do a grade on it and then bring it into the alpha and then put that map the reflections inside of the puddles and do a little exposure bump on it and a blur and uh, color correct and then I'm getting here the car reflecting in the puddles and then comp the car over the background I'm also doing a 
little bit of exposure adjustment on the card before I bring it in. Let me discuss a little bit about uh, the way that uh, Unreal does depth of field in comparison to Maya. So in Maya, the depth of field is coming in on a depth Z channel. And in Unreal, it's coming in in the final image movie render queue world depth red channel. So it actually comes in as an RGB channel and you're supposed to just take the red channel out of it and then put it in. Otherwise you're doing it exactly the same as you would from Maya in that here, the math for it is depth. So it's like proper accurate depth of field. Something that I kind of like to do just so I can see what's going on is I shuffle out the depth of field information into here where you can see down here, you can see the uh, information in the red channel and the distance. And so this corresponds to centimeters, which are the scene units. And so one, the pixel value of one equals one centimeter. And so here I'm at a distance of uh, 2,500 centimeters. And so I've got, therefore, the depth of field on the CG from Maya. I've got the depth of field on my background plane. I Well, first of all, I comp the CG on top of that. But then I have this foreground element from the Unreal stuff. And so I have a cryptomat for that. And I put the render into the cryptomat. And then I'm just doing a regular defocus on it to throw it out of focus and then put that over this uh, background. All of this, frankly, would be a lot nicer with the new upcoming edition of uh, Peregrine Bouquet for doing uh, depth of field. That's uh, so much nicer than this uh, ZD focus. So that's cool that Nuke is going to ha be having that. I think in uh, version 14.1, they said this should be out. And then finally, I have this uh, optical glow just to get kind of like a exponential fall off glow on uh, lights and such. And then all of that gets put together and rendered out. And then I use that as a pre comp and add motion blur, optical motion blur to it. And then write that all out. And you can see that the because the uh, light information from Unreal and from Maya, of course, is physically accurate, I'm getting physically accurate um, blurring, uh, motion blur on the, the light sources in the image, which is cool.